Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. When you're supposed to refuse to help the owner of the company. Warning, honesty with customers may shorten your career. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. When you're supposed to refuse to help the owner of the company. I have long worked senior support for a major and very unionized ISP. Being in a union has its perks, but it comes with some rigidity. In ours, the sets of tasks of each job description are very specific, and in theory, if anyone does something that falls under someone else's purview, then the union must file a grievance and claim damages, typically paid to the most senior union employee in the wrong job. Five years ago, I was actually filling in for a sick union rep for about a year I basically multitasked between my usual job and whatever time I needed off to work on union issues. As a rep, I had to be very strict about enforcing every comma of the work contract. And my job, as senior support, allowed me to talk to help any employee in the company or our subcontractors on a very large scope of issues. One thing we could never do was talk to a customer directly. This would have been overstepping on the front line's job. Best rule in that book, winky face. It was late on a Sunday night, I'm the only senior support left, sick colleague, but the line was very quiet. The owner of the company had internet problems at home. To make the issue quite clear-cut, he was not actively an employee of his own company, just the owner. And he needed help, so since he couldn't just call the support line like a random peasant, he called the director of the department and orders came down to the panicked manager that most senior and most internet savvy tech had to call him within 15 minutes to fix his problem. So they come to me, I'm the only senior around. I immediately pick up on the fact that I'm being asked to do a job that isn't mine because it's the owner. I could have done it and pretended I didn't think about it, but when you're a union rep you're rarely in a mood to bend the rules they never bend. Not for free. Slash you slash bite wave, I'm obligated to point that out that doesn't fall under the purview of my job description, I'd be depriving someone else of labor in violation of the work contract. If you want I'll get you the best frontline employee still on the floor to make the call. If you need it to be me, it needs to be in order, and then I'm forced to put my union rep cap on, and will go to your office to file a grievance and claim after which if my shift isn't over by then I'll happily make the call since I must comply with a direct order if management insists once a grievance is filled. Incredulous lower management, oh come on, you're not doing this to me, it's past 10, there's no A team left here. Slash you slash bite wave, yeah I know. Look, I have be hard s about the little rules though, like you guys always are when it suits you. Every time we want an exception you make us bargain and sign a letter of agreement. Nothing personal. Anxious lower management looking at their watch, look it needs to be you, but we don't have time for a grievance, what do you want? And we can't sign any letters of agreement either, you'll have to take a handshake deal and I can't give you much. Slash you slash bite wave, I want nothing, but the union wants something you can give. What we've been asking you to do with your team for the last month. I know holiday bonuses are coming, but you've been way out of the median with your team when it comes to disciplinary letters. Half my grievances are over your man, and there's six of you on this floor. It's not that your employees are worse than the others, you're too hard ass. Promise me you'll fall back in the median at least until the end of year, and as a show of good faith, red ate the two too many sick days ones we did earlier to tomorrow as I make the call that'll make them invalid as today was the last of your 10 calendar days to hand them out. You know they were overkill. Relieve lower management, fine. Shred them, I'll bring you the redated ones and I'll cut back, but no grievance, the call to the owner happens now. Hands were shaken. Phone was picked up as I pulled his file and RF data. Slash you slash bite wave, good evening, Mr. Big Boss. I'm bite wave, one of your senior technicians. I'm told there are some issues with your internet tonight. Mr. Big Boss, yeah, it's a bit late, but I need it tonight. It's just down, modem looks normal. I reset it, no change. I'm not even using a router here. My IP address is just 169.x.x.x, .x .x, even if I press repair. 
I was actually impressed, the guy had basic skills, almost like if I wasn't talking to a dirty end user. And had a real issue, RF was okay just no assigned IP, which a reset normally fixes. Slash you slash byte wave, alright, the signal looks fine, we'll do a simple test. While leaving the power cord and the ethernet cords in, I need you to unscrew the coaxial cable from the modem, wait a few seconds, and press repair again. Mr. Big Boss, what does that even do, it won't work without the cable. Less impressed. Successfully resisted impulse to say I'm not telling him how to wrap up Q4 expenditures. Slash you slash bite wave, trust the good doctor, sir. Our modems have an internal DHCP which will try to assign a 192 IP address to your computer if there is no signal. If it fails to, it's a computer issue, if it succeeds, the problem will most likely fix itself once we replug the coax, unless there's a network or IP stack problem. Mr. Big Boss, huh, well, it's done, I have an address that starts with 192, just one blinking light left on the modem though. Slash you slash bite wave, wonderful, screw it back in, wait for all the lights to be there. It'll take about 30 seconds. Mr. Big Boss, okay, it's back on. I guess I press repair again? I saw a valid IP had already been assigned and accepted. Lower management was back at my desk putting next to me the misdated reprimand letters asking me with his eyes if things were okay. Slash you slash bite wave. Actually just close your control panel sir, and open your browser, you're online. Mr. Big Boss. So what was the problem? If every frontline agent bothered to try this, we'd save so much on useless service calls and complaints from customers who were told to reinstall Windows and or change their network cards to no avail. Slash you slash bite wave, nothing major, a little network bail renewal quirk. Happens rarely. Mr. Big Boss, thanks, good service, then he messed up my name, so I knew I wasn't getting a Christmas card. Slash you slash bite wave, my pleasure, have a good evening sir. Excited lower management, you fixed it? Slash you slash bite wave, yeah. You know, you made the right call, everyone still left here would have sent him a technician or said it's the computer. It would have been better for me if he just needed a password reset and you still had to keep your word. I said with a grin. No word about this call and I won't log it in remedy. Relieved lower management, I'll do what I said. You know it's actually the five others who should toughen the line a bit, discipline is lax, absenteeism is high. Slash you slash bite wave, not on my watch. I joked seriously, the reason you're the outlier is because it's the director who sets the general policy, and he wants some workplace peace. It's about striking a balance. The breathing room you give your team will improve morale, and then maybe your job will be less stressful too. He gave me a nod and left, I don't think I changed his worldview, but he was true to his word and I had to fill way fewer grievances after that. Sometimes a little blackmail does wonders. Warning, honesty with customers may shorten your career. A few years back, I was working as senior support and since we have our own space, rarely listened to calls from frontline staff unless it was for mentoring purposes. But one day, I had to go down to the main floor. There was a guy sitting in an isolated corner cubicle, been there a year or so. Not too great technically from what I knew, but not utterly lousy. But shy slash loner type. He raises his voice a bit, seems to be on a difficult call. Overly honest guy, OHGSIR, I can't do that. I know the good technician temporarily fixed your problem before, but that was more than 90 days ago, so we're back to square one here. I really need to send two more bad ones first. I shake my head in disbelief, surely this is a prank. Knowing the policies, I know very well what he might be saying but there's no way he just said that to a customer. OHG, that's right, two more subcontractors, I know they probably can't do it, but then we can send you one of our own and we'll make sure he fixes it for good, but it has to be within a 90 days period. Yes, I'm sorry, I understand, but it's just how it works here. Okay then. Let's not panic. I go do my thing, talk whom I was going to see, go back up to my desk, 
log in the call monitoring software and listen to his call. It was exactly what I dreaded. Frustrated customer with too many service calls, insists on getting an in-house road technician because by then he figured our subcontractors are. And OHG is spilling the beans about our internal policy. In-house, unionized road techs are expensive and generally very good. They're hourly, don't care at all if they need to spend half a day on one call as long as the customer is happy, and love staying late on overtime if your case is complicated. So we have an escalation system that pretty much ensures you'll never get one to visit, until you've had two smelly subcontractors showing a little but crack paid per call instead rush into your place and fail to fix your problem if it's even remotely non-obvious. That customer's problem was real. Intermittent heavy packet loss, neighborhood is fine, modem changed, wiring redone, been going for way too long. And officially, since it's been 100 days since the last time we tried to fix it, we're supposed to send a per-call subcontractor, just like OHG said. Using my superpowers, I cancel the basic service call set up by OHG and forward the case to recall with instructions to set up an advanced service call even if we're outside the normal time frame. It's a no-brainer, the customer has had SH asterisk TTY service for a year, it's a wonder his bills are still getting paid. Then there's a real decision to make. I can forward that call to his boss, and we all know what happens. He's not my friend and he's not particularly great at his job, and he has a honesty problem. But, solidarity, I decide to talk to him first to see if he was just high or something, whether this was a one-time mistake. Slash you slash bite wave, hey OHG, you're not on a call? Okay, leave the queue. Look I heard a call earlier where you explained our service call procedures in detail to a customer. Do you usually do that? OHG, hey man. Ah uh, yeah, he really wanted an in-house tech, but I know to follow the procedure, I followed it to the letter he beams. Slash you slash bite wave, dude, the procedure doesn't say you need to tell them how us asterisk 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 our subcontractors are. You're supposed to pretend they're all good and will likely fix the problem. I'm feeling bad as I say it. OHG, oh no, I can't actually lie. Slash you slash bite wave. OHG, my religious beliefs are that it's a sin to. Slash you slash bite wave. Okay, please don't tell me, I'm not your boss and much less your priest, it's none of my business. But my job obligates me to disclose what I heard if you're telling me you will do it again. Are you telling me you'd do that call the way you did it if you had to have it again? OHG, sounding a bit guilty, no, I kind of lost my cool and raised my voice a little, I'd take that back. But I'm not lying to a customer if that's what you're asking. Slash you slash bite wave. Okay, thank you OHG, I know this was a slightly awkward conversation, but thanks for taking a minute to chat with me. OHG hey, it's no problem, thanks for checking with me first. That last reply gave me chills, and left me fairly convinced he knew what would happen. This may be the part one hate most in my job. Occasionally getting a colleague in trouble, as opposed to my favorite part, getting a subcontractor in trouble. I go back up to my desk, attach the WAVE file of the call to a short email I send to his boss and his union rep. I watch out for my people, but I still need to do my job if they don't want my help. I got the end of the story from the union rep the next day. They didn't just fire him on the spot, they had a lengthy talk about how to say things to customers and OHG was so inflexible about his strict definition of what a lie is that the boss said he had to let him go and OHG told the union rep he did not want to file a grievance. Usually, terminating a union employee is a big fight and a lengthy arbitration, but when it's not, and when it's not a matter like fraud or another severe offense, the company and the union arrange so that the kid can at least claim unemployment, which happened here. Normally not available if you quit or are fired for cause. So please be careful about your religious beliefs. The job involves secretly hating users, liking to lie in their face, and having some schadenfreude when you tell them you can't give them what they want. We're sorry it was not disclosed in the interview.